Hello friends, this is Vijay Bambani here. I hope the markets are treating you well and you're doing very good in the markets. Friends, I'm in this video here to discuss what the energy crisis means for us, what it means for us in our day-to-day -day life and what it can mean as investors and traders in the markets. Now, as I record this video on 2nd of October, Saturday, which I think will probably be uh, uploaded on Thursday, I'm going to present you with the facts as I have them at this point in time. You see, the seeds of this uh, energy crisis was sown in 2020 after the COVID pandemic hit us. Where crude oil is concerned, we all remember how the April 2020 expiry of the MCX uh, contract of crude oil saw negative prices. Yes, negative prices. Actually, uh, uh, if a buyer had bought at any given point in time, he would have made a loss because prices actually went below zero. Now the matter went sub -judice, it went to the courts and uh, uh, for many, many months, crude oil trade was actually not entertained by many brokers. Same was the case in the US. Now, oil exporting countries suffered big losses and since they had to provide a stimulus to their population from the COVID pandemic, there was obviously a, a deficit in their budgets. So OPEC plus was formed. OPEC plus non-OPEC countries coming together, including uh, Russia, the biggest non-OPEC exporter of oil. They came together and I remember in my video last year, over a year ago said, now uh, uh, nobody is uh, going to take a fight to the extent where Saudi Arabia and um, uh, uh, Russia go out there and open all the taps and start triggering a price war, which is what happened. OPEC plus was formed and crude oil uh, uh, supply was artificially curtailed by all these members to jack prices up. And that's precisely what is happening. Another issue that occurred, which hit the gas trade last year, was the polar vortex. In uh, late December of uh, 2020 and early January of 2021, a big uh, uh, cold wave hit the Arctic Circle, which impacted North America and northern parts of Europe. Gas pipelines froze. Many were even disrupted. Some were ruptured and a whole lot of surplus gas was created. And thereafter, in the summer of 2021, you saw uh, uh, gas prices actually collapse. Now, there was only one of the two options available to the gas marketing companies. Either you store this gas and sell it at a later date in the following summer winters or you flare it up. Flaring would mean burning. Burning is a total loss. All right. So storage was the only option. And as uh, it occurs in uh, uh, pure uh, capitalist economies, anything that is in short supply, the prices go up. Storage was in short supply, so uh, uh, companies that uh, owned the storage spaces, typically underground tanks, started uh, hiking their fees up to a factor of four times the usual storage uh, costs. Which is why we knew that ahead of the winter of 2021, natural gas prices were likely to go up because the sellers would build in this uh, storage expense into the cost which is why this year's gas prices were expected to be somewhat, I expected somewhat higher. But what really happened was that uh, the green uh, movement came in and started pressurizing the governments to basically uh, uh, stop allocating fresh capital to uh, drilling and exploration of new oil and gas fields. And in the interim, the memory of uh, the winter of 2020-21 was still fresh in the minds of European and North American buyers. 
fires in uh, uh, Latin American uh, countries like Brazil, drought in Argentina, etc. meant that uh, hydropower projects did not generate electricity and gas was used to generate electricity. So this resulted in the price going higher. As of now, what we are facing is a very, very surprising aspect of the market, which at least I have not yet been able to understand. The Russians have constructed the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which is a twin track pipeline put together. Both these pipes can bring 110 billion cubic meters of gas to Germany. The Russians are very clear that they are ready as of 1st of October, <clears throat> which is past 1st of October 2021 to start turning on the taps and supply gas to Germany. Ironically, the Germans are refusing to buy this gas unless the Russians apply for registration with the gas regulatory authority, a process which takes up to four months. The Russians, well aware of the German laws, are advising the Germans, look, under the Essential Services Act, you can basically have emergency powers, lives are at stake, you could see uh, people freezing over in the winters if the gas is not available to heat homes. So, of course, we will apply for the registration, but you can start buying gas now. The Germans refuse to budge. So, 110 billion cubic meters of gas is being denied to Europe. On the other hand, what has happened is that Britain, after Brexit, which means after exiting uh, uh, the uh, European Union uh, uh, kind of uh, arrangement has seen migrant truck drivers being sent back to their respective countries. Now, estimates are, and I'm using the word estimates here, there is a shortage of up to 1 lakh truck drivers in UK, the United Kingdom. And since there are no truck drivers available, to the horror of the British people, there is a shortage of uh, uh, CNG, LNG, petrol, diesel at the fuel pumps. Obviously, since transport is uh, disrupted, there are some stores in which supplies are running out. There is also panic buying amongst uh, citizens who are fearing shortages and therefore holding essential commodities. And the problem is that we have a winter ahead of us. Since we are into uncharted territory where gas prices are going is uh, uncharted territory because of the simple fact that it's not gone there uh, uh, for 10 or 11 years. 10 or 11 years ago, a similar situation had occurred and then gas prices came down again because supplies were restored. Here too, supplies are likely to get restored over a period of time because uh, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, as uh, uh, I'm recording this video, has given a go ahead to the British Army to be called in to drive these supply trucks so that the shortages can be cleared. There is also talk, uh, uh, as I record this video on a Saturday, that uh, immigrant drivers may be issued temporary visas to come to England and uh, uh, man these trucks. But whether the political uh, situation will allow him to take away uh, British jobs from uh, British nationals is something we'll have to see. Do remember, after COVID, locals do not want their jobs to go to foreigners because inflation, joblessness, pay cuts, etc. are becoming a widespread phenomena. So as we speak, I think the British problem will get sorted out over a period of time. And what we need to look forward to till the end of November now are a hurricanes in the US uh, East Coast and any kind of typhoons or uh, 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 disruptions in the weather in the Gulf and 
Southeast uh, uh, Asian seas, South China seas. So uh, as I record this video, there has already been disruption in uh, Oman uh, uh, from a storm and uh, there has been flooding. Some refineries have got impacted and therefore there is disruption and fear in the gas markets all over again. If at all the winter is harsh, Europe and America will see gas prices probably, I'm using the word probably, go up again. That is if the Nord Stream 2 pipeline does not really start transporting gas. So net net all in all, there are too many moving parts to this story. And if any one of this moving part uh, uh, breaks down, the entire machine breaks down. There are too many variables. You have uh, the hurricane season in the American coast. You have typhoons in Southeast Asia. Uh, uh, you have uh, Nord Stream 2, which is not getting regulatory approval from uh, the Germans. You have the British uh, uh, truckers who are uh, uh, adamant about a pay hike and uh, a shortage of drivers. And you have uh, uh, Norway, which has uh, recently elected a new government, which is more friendly to uh, uh, exporting more gas and uh, uh, Brent oil, which is uh, ready to open up its tap and sell more of each commodity. So there are positives and there are negatives, but the markets are frankly caught on the wrong foot. Positions will get squeezed. And what do we get impacted as uh, uh, citizens not connected with commodity markets? Chances are your LPG cylinder will start costing higher. Chances are that you might have to pay more for your petrol and diesel uh, 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 top up in your car, bike, scooter or whatever. Now, if at all prices rise in the winter, we are fearing some amount of inflation. Don't forget that the Chinese supply chain might also get disrupted extremely critically and China being the factory of the world, everything from clothes to mobile phones to cars might just start costing a tad higher. So these are the uh, fallouts of uh, uh, the oil and uh, gas uh, uh, shortage crisis. And we need to brace up and be careful out there. So hold your trades with stop losses, exercise due diligence, don't get aggressive, avoid leverage long positions. And at this point in time, think long term rather than trying to take short term profits and avoid greed. On this somber note, this is Vijay Bambwani signing off for now till we meet again in my next not before reminding you to click like on this video if you agree with what you saw. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. In the comment section, good, bad or ugly, I welcome all your feedback. Also help me reach out to fellow like-minded investors and traders by referring my video to your family and friends. Thank you for your patience. I wish you have a very, very profitable day ahead. Bye-bye for now.